Hey, Chris Lipe here with three vocal recovery exercises and why they're helpful. So you've probably been in the situation before where you've oversung and you're a little hoarse, you're a little involuntarily raspy, and what's happened is your vocal cords are a little swollen initially, and then as they're recovering, they're a little less elastic. So these three vocal exercises are going to help you keep your voice engaged while it's recovering and help you feel when it's ready to be used at full capacity again. If these exercises are helpful to you, you can find even more exercises in my free course, Seven Highly Effective Vocal Exercises That Won't Annoy Your Neighbors. And you can find that by clicking the link in the video info below. Okay, first exercise for vocal recovery. We're going to do this, like that, but we're gonna be super slack with our face. And then we're gonna drop the pitch until we fry out, until we go into vocal fry. Fry. Really a simple thing to do that you can do pretty much all the time. You can do it quietly. What we wanna do though, this isn't just about doing the exercise and checking the box. Okay, my voice is gonna be recovered. It's about feeling the exercise. So the first thing we're gonna do feel-wise is really focus on feeling the sensation of the mmm in our face. What we're doing is we're drawing attention away from our battered throat and we are feeling the resonance in our face. And I've said this in other videos before, The beauty of the voice and the quality of the voice doesn't come from our vocal cords. It comes from this initial sound with the resonance happening everywhere else in the, in our face tissues, in our, in our neck. If we think about our voice kind of like a a record player or the needle, you know, when you go down and you listen to a record player and you get real close, you can hear that the sound coming directly from the needle as it's reading the grooves but it's not resonant at all. And I've talked about this in other videos. This whole area is a way for our voice to project much like speakers and amplifiers are. And so by us directing our attention away from our battered vocal cords, our overused vocal cords, and keeping our face loose, we're able to engage our facial resonance which the next time we go to sing, we'll be well prepared with recovered vocal cords to make this our focus rather than the sound we're trying to generate with our throat, okay? So then the benefit of going down to mm, uh, is that if we keep our, our resonance focus on our face and then we go down to fry, think about fry as in its pure Uh, mildly supported form as kind of a massage on your vocal cords. We're not going for any pitch or we're not even trying to go for chord closure, right? Because fry is just, is kind of slinky slack vocal cords doing their thing. So we're allowing our vocal cords to engage in probably the most relaxed and free way they can, coupled with a refocusing on our resonance. Mm, uh, mm, uh. This exercise does not work if your face is tense uh, or if you're harboring any tension at all, but it's a great thing to do. I do it multiple times throughout the day, even when my voice doesn't feel particularly tired or overused because it's a great way for me to engage these sorts of things and recenter and refocus. All right. 
Exercise number two. Again, this is done at a very quiet volume, very quiet level, and it allows us to engage our vocal cords in our head voice with a soft onset, which your vocal cords like, especially when they've been overused. So we're doing a mild H, he, 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 and engaging somewhere in our middle head voice where we're comfortable engaging. He, he. Then we are playing with our support. We're playing with this idea of blending our resonances together, our head resonance and our chest resonance without a break. And we're doing this quietly enough. And you'll find that if, you, if you're doing it quietly enough, this bridging on the way down is not difficult. We don't want this. Right? We want to slide through there. What we're doing here is, first of all, we are gradually engaging. We're, we're letting air pass through our cords just a little bit, and then we're bringing our cords together. This is not where we're, we're, letting our vo we're, we're having our vocal cords kind of immediately engage. That likely is what has contributed to your voice being tired. Hard onsets can really tire out your voice. So practicing soft onsets, particularly in head voice where your vocal cords are, uh, are stretched a little thinner, are going to allow for a nice mild initial engagement. Again, it's like a massage. Then as we bridge down into our chest resonance, our vocal cords get uh, less tight and thicker sounding. And then we engage in vocal fry. So we've covered... The, the whole gamut, really, of vocal cord positioning in one exercise. Think of it kind of like, you know, the, the deep tissue massage where, you know, you've got someone really going into those back muscles and hitting them from different angles all within one motion. That's really kind of what we're about. I'm not a masseuse. This is probably not a real... <laughs> a real like back massage motion but i think you get the point we are we're trying to cover a wide range of positioning in a mild tolerable and therapeutic way okay number three we're going to practice a soft stage whisper you've probably heard before that whispering isn't all that good for your voice and it's not regular whispering isn't and the reason why is because you are halfway engaging your vocal cords with true phonation and then you're letting air pass through your voice uh your vocal cords and that large amount of air going through your vocal cords coupled with the the actual closure you're drying out your voice your vocal cords and then you're engaging them drying them out engaging them because lots of air is passing and then you're, you're practicing these intermittent sort of onsets in a standard whisper but stage whispering is totally different and is actually really neat for your voice. So to get to a stage whisper, we actually want to start with speaking. And then we want to add compression, a very mild form of compression. And then we want to keep talking softer and softer while still maintaining true phonation. So if I'm going to talk and then I'm going to put this, we're actually engaging our false chords, engaging our false chords like that so that would be holding our breath and then practicing letting air through that's very different than right we're actually letting less air through and we're letting the area above our vocal cords moderate that air so we're pushing a little more and we're moderating the airflow above our vocal cords. Then we, when we combine that with a normal cord closure, you can hear both happening at the same time. And this feels really good. Now, it has the tendency sometimes to, you want to try to do both lower. Like this. That's not the same. 
you, you start to feel a little bit of this lower sort of raspy, that might be how your voice feels already. This is a way to delineate that airy raspiness from practicing good chord closure. And this is definitely the most advanced of the three. But if we can get that separate, separated feel, this is going to help us coax our voice back into a less intense or less tense and less overworked state. So let's get there again. Talking, talking. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel it. I. It doesn't feel like it's drying out my voice. Play with it. Be careful with it. This engaging this throughout the day just a little bit is a great way also to practice quiet mild false chord engagement which if you've watched other videos i'm all about creative ways to kind of trick or coax our brain into getting our false chords engaged so not only is this a great sensation and a great way to re-engage your voice after it's been reworked but it's also a great way when we go to sing for real we get that delineation of these, these two different points of sensation that we're supposed to be feeling in our minds and in our, in our vocal tract. I hope these were helpful to you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, if you want more tricks and exercises like this, be sure to join my free course, Seven Highly Effective Vocal Exercises That Won't Annoy Your Neighbors by clicking the link below. We'll see you for more.